as far as the advantages of stored procedures um, stored procedure can use an input and output parameters this executes faster than writing T-SQL as it is compiled and part of the database so this is a very important point if you were to take like let's say a select statement and just go to the management studio and run it um, it will run a little slower as opposed to running the same SQL statement in a stored procedure and the reason for that is that um, SQL Server goes ahead and computes uh, the execution plan and it already knows how to get that data so the minute you execute the procedure it is ready to go another advantage is uh, code reuse and portability so the idea here is that you uh, if you are going to be using the same code you just really write it once and you enca encapsulate it into a stored procedure this way uh, your code will be much uh, easier to maintain and you really have to change it in only one place you can also use the stored procedure to uh, enforce business rules uh, another important point is that stored procedure can be a security mechanism which allows the DBA to give access to the stored procedure only and not the underlying data so if you want to hide the data uh, kind of like the, we talked about the view you can uh, put all the information in a stored procedure and then give the user access to that procedure only. Now the one disadvantage uh, that they have that they cannot be used in a select statement. So this is where a function comes in handy uh, where you can actually uh, send information, do some processing. All right, so I will just say create procedure. You give it a name. So let's say PR underscore term employees I think I have another one so I will keep this short and then you say as okay uh, now what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to go ahead and use that other view that we had looked at uh, I believe it's just this one let me actually it's <coughs> I had another created another one called info okay that's the current one so basically uh, I'm looking for a field called current flag which I'm using as a indicator of uh, if the employees terminated and I went ahead and changed these first five to zero so um, so I will say current flag is equal to zero so this just th these two lines really return the five employees that were terminated so our procedure is going to output this data first and then it will also go ahead and send an email to maybe let's say a manager that okay uh, these employees are terminated so you, we have to file the paperwork or whatnot maybe uh, you know disable their login accounts things of that nature um, so the next piece is actually uh, uses the uh, database mail and I have uh, a SQL command these are basically uh, SQL files that I have on my machine uh, anytime you have you're working with a code you can do a file save as and you can save uh, these as SQL files they essentially contain T-SQL so uh, I'm going to uh, open up another that file and it's this SP underscore send DB mail underscore termination and this code, uh, we cover about this stuff in uh, the database mail topic. But for now, uh, I'm going to copy this to the other one. And then I will walk you through this. So this is the uh, first part, is to just to display the, uh, the terminated employees. And the second one is to send an email okay um, and uh, here essentially what it's doing is it's calling a system stored procedure from MSDB database uh, it's using the database mail profile called SQL agent uh, it will actually go ahead and send this email to kashi at learningcomputer.com that's me and it's saying that okay I want to send these query results which is essentially uh, this statement up here 
and then uh, actually I can let me change one thing in here just to stay consistent so instead of the other one I will go ahead and use this one so that's our SQL statement uh, in the body of the email I want to say here's the list of terminated employees and then the subject of the email is terminated employees and so I will parse this and execute this now what this is gonna do is actually gonna generate the stored procedure so if I refresh uh, my stored procedures notice that we don't have one called PR term employees if I refresh it now we do and you could uh, modify this if you wanted to which uses the alter procedure command but really what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and execute it and so again a couple of ways you can do that you can execute it here you can do a script and execute but I will just copy this one open up a new query and say execute this one pretty straightforward uh, command and <clears throat> when I run this command it doesn't uh, like something query expression uh, okay so maybe what I should have done is stayed with the original yeah so and I will say I'll put in today's date here so we know it's this email so we just change this procedure copy this one here go to a new query and say execute this one so let's try that one okay I think this one worked uh, a little bit better it went ahead and it sent out the information first and then under messages it's saying uh, the mail is queued up in order for this to work you would have to configure a database mail we didn't cover that in this video but um, we do talk about it in one of our sessions and if you were wondering where database mail is and it's under the management tab and database mail so to check this email see if it really worked I'm not making this up. I'm going to go ahead and log into my email. It doesn't look like it's here yet. Actually, let me. Uh, I'm wondering if I'm sending it to uh, another email. And in fact, I am. So. I have to change two things and not one. That's what happens when you have uh, 20 different email addresses. Um, so now I just changed the email address. I will go ahead and parse it, execute it. And this time I'm hoping the third time is a charm. I will and execute this one again it uh, sends the information and it sends the email I will switch back to my email account and boom finally thank you um, now if you click on this email it's saying here's the list of uh, terminated employees it went ahead and uh, looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, five records here. 